Welcome back to part two for our lesson on literal equations. We left off on example three, so let's look at example four. We want to solve the following equation for x. We have y equals mx plus b, which happens to be the slope-intercept form of a linear equation. So again, our goal here is to isolate x on one side of the equation. Since x is on the right side, we'll isolate x on the right side. So we first want to isolate the term containing x by adding or subtracting. So we don't want this plus b here. So for our first step, we'll subtract b on both sides of the equation. On the left side, we have y minus b equals, on the right side, notice that b minus b is equal to zero. So we just have mx on the right. Again, we're trying to solve for x. mx means m times x. So to undo this multiplication and isolate x, we'll divide both sides by m. Notice on the right side we have m divided by m, which simplifies to one. So we have y minus b divided by m equals x. So this is our solution, but if we're solving for x, it's more common to have x on the left side. So let's change the order of this and write our solution as x equals the quantity y minus b divided by m. So this would be one way to express the solution, but because we're dividing by the monomial m, we could also break this up into two separate fractions. We could write the solution as x equals y divided by m minus b divided by m. This would be another way to express the solution. Example five, we want to solve the following equation for y. So we have the equation three x plus four y equals 20. So for solving for y, we first want to isolate the term containing y. So we don't want this three x here. So for the first step, we'll subtract three x on both sides of the equation. Simplifying, three x minus three x is zero. So now we have the equation four y equals, on the right side we have 20 minus three x. Again, our goal here is to solve the equation for y. Four y means four times y. So to undo this multiplication and isolate y, we divide both sides by four. Simplifying, four divided by four is equal to one. So we have y equals, the quantity 20 minus 3x divided by four. Once again, there are several ways to express our solution. We could leave it in this form here where we have y equals the quantity 20 minus 3x divided by four. But again, because we're dividing by a monomial, we could also write this as y equals 20 divided by four minus 3x divided by four. Now this does simplify Notice 20 divided by four is equal to five, so we'd have y equals five. And then notice here the coefficient of this term would be negative three-fourths, so we could write this as negative three-fourths x. So we might see the solution in this form, or this form, or if we wanted to have the terms on the right in descending order, we could also write this as y equals negative three-fourths x plus five. So it is important to be able to recognize that our solution could be expressed in several different forms. Example six, we want to solve the following equation for y. We have the equation x minus y equals five. So we first want to isolate the y term, so we don't want this x here on the left. So for the first step, we'll subtract x on both sides. Simplify, x minus x is equal to zero. So we have negative y equals five minus x. Negative y is equal to negative one y, which means negative one times y. So to undo this multiplication and isolate y, we'll divide both sides by negative one. Negative one divided by negative one simplifies to one. So we have y equals the quantity five minus x divided by negative one. We don't want to leave this negative here in the denominator. So let's go ahead and divide each term in the numerator by negative one. 
This is equal to five divided by negative one minus x divided by negative one. So simplifying here, notice how the first term would be negative five. And then we have minus x divided by negative one would be negative x. So subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. So the two most common ways to express our solution would be y equals negative five plus x. Or if we want the right side to be in descending order, we put the x term first. So we could also express the solution as y equals x minus five. These would be the two most common ways to express the solution to our literal equation. For our last example, we have f equals nine-fifths c plus 32, and we're asked to solve the equation for c. So we'll first isolate the c term by subtracting 32 on both sides. Simplifying, we have f minus 32 on the left equals, on the right we have nine-fifths c, and then of course, 32 minus 32 is equal to zero. Nine-fifths c means nine-fifths times c. So we might be thinking we should divide both sides by nine-fifths to isolate c, but instead of dividing by a fraction, we multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal of nine-fifths is five-ninths, so to solve for c, we'll multiply both sides by five-ninths. Let's simplify the right side first. Notice how five-ninths times nine-fifths simplifies to one. So we have c equals five-ninths times the quantity f minus 32. Again, because we're solving for c, we typically want c on the left side. Let's rewrite this as c equals five-ninths times the quantity f minus 32. This would be one way to express our solution, but we could also distribute the five-ninths if we wanted to. So we could also say c equals five-ninths times f, or five-ninths f, minus five-ninths times 32. Let's find that product on the calculator. So we have five-ninths times 32. This gives us a decimal approximation to find the fraction We'll press math, enter, enter, which gives us 160 ninths. So we have minus 160 ninths. Of course, we could also find this product by hand. Five ninths times 32 over one, nothing simplifies, so we still get 160 ninths. So our solution can be expressed in this form here or this form here but notice how it's extra work if you decide to distribute. I hope you found this helpful.